My name is Tom Mutter. Tom? Yeah, Mutter. Can, can you spell the last name? M-U-L-L-E-R. E-R. What is your birthday? Uh, July 14th. July 14th? Yeah. Year? In 1929. 29. So you were born in the year of Great Depression? Yeah, right. The place didn't start until October. So you were three months before the Great Depression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't feel it because you were the child, I mean the infant, right? Right. Yeah. Where were you born? Green, Green Bay. Green Bay? Yeah. And tell me about your family when you were growing up. Your parents, your siblings. Well, my mother and my father were very resourceful because it was a depression. In those days, uh, the what they would do is is they would go out to eat at night, you know. Yeah. And what they did is they would go through the bars with a big spoon of beer. And that made the bartender very happy. Because they had to get rid of their beer to stay business, you know. So they did is they gave mother and father each a big bowl of popcorn. And every time it was every day it filled up again. Because popcorn was so cheap, it was free, like free, you know. Uh -huh. And they give them a, a dish of crabs. And they still sell sour crabs in restaurants now, but they're uh, dogs, they're very expensive. But in those days, crab were expensive because you catch, the, catch them in the rivers and, and streams, and, and people were all applied, but they could, they had time to catch the crabs. And they sold for a few cents to the bachelors, you know. <laughs> The bunny would use the crabs and the popcorn to attract the people. And that's why they, they, they ate for supper as well. So your parents were very smart. They, yeah, and they, 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 I was a mother, you know, I paid in and, and fixed things up and, and we grew up and, and we were, the kids, we were, we were completely sheltered from the place we didn't know what, we, what it was like and it was, it was a very pleasant time, you know. Mm -hmm. It was how Joe and Julius was fighting, and he had this bum a month. I don't know if you remember that. He'd, he'd take somebody, every month he would have a fight, you know. And uh, it was it was kind of, it was a good time to walk around the block, and there was no air conditioning distance in those days. So people, all the people would be sitting out on their porch, you know, because they didn't want to sit in the hot spot of the house. You walk around the house and they walk around the block, and the people would look things to the, the fight, you know. They had videos with them, and that's, and they had a little more TV at that time. It's mm -hmm. just real, you know. So when did you graduate your high school? Uh, I, I didn't remember the year, it was East High. And so you were? Oh, uh, I was 48. 48? 48? Yeah. Uh -huh. What high school did you graduate? What? What high school did you graduate? Uh, East High. East High? East, East, East High. It's just E-A-S-T, East. Uh -huh. At that time there was an East and a West. And in your school, did they teach anything about Korea? No. Did you know anything well, about Korea? They, they, they probably did. But I don't know. But they, they probably missed it along with, with like a hundred other names and they rattled off. And <laughs> that's so you didn't know much about Korea? No. Not really. And so when after you graduated high school, what did you do? I worked at a junior department store. Huh? A junior 
they, they call in June Department of Service. Actually, it's it was it was like a well, it was a, the department store that sold all. It was between the Am store and the department store. It was they sold cheap, cheap stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. Like a dollar store these days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you worked there. Yeah. See, and my job was to bring bring stuff up. Like the, the boxes of perfume to to the girls, you know, and these boxes were really heavy there, but they're kind kind of heavy for the girls, like like forty pounds, you know, and I put put them on a dolly, forty pounds, put them on a dolly, and they hired us to do that. They would not because the box that was ready for the girls, you know. How to, much were you paid for that job? I know, but it wasn't very much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so with, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say that there's another guy from, from high school who from, actually was in my class. And he was, he was a pretty bloody, bloody, he was in charge of, of the, uh, uh, of the merchandise, you know, he come in, he come in the back door, and he had to take it off the truck and put it on, and he, he had to be pretty strong to do that, you know, because mm -hmm. it took so some of the stuff to put in a big box, like hundred pounds, and he would just lift it up and throw them on. Huh? Hmm. And when did you join the military? Were you drafted or were you enlisted? I drafted. When? Uh, I don't know, I think it was about in 1950. 50? Yeah. So, drafted to Army? Yeah. And was it before Korean War or after the Korean War? No, it was during the war. So, it was after the the breakout of the Korean War, right? Yeah. Yes. So the war was on at that time. It was, it was yeah, the war was on. And we had, there's a man that came to the house and he said, oh, this is going to be a few months, but I did it. it. Lasted a long time. Yeah. And I remember I was, before, during the war, I was in this, uh, uh, before the war, I was in the Naval Reserve, you know. And there were quite a few of us. And then we all quit. Much of us all quit. In the war, we all were all back to We all get, want to, uh, is it going to be a war? We want to be in the Navy. We would have to, uh, to go ashore. Mm -hmm. And they would take us back. And I remember mean, I walked over a bridge out there. Well, this, this is the dumbest thing I really quit the neighbors and I'm not like the neighbors. You feel kind of depressed like that. So you, you told me that you didn't know much about Korea before uh -huh. and the Korean War broke out. What were you thinking? You thinking that you were dragged into the Korean War? Yeah, well, I stationed, uh, well, let's see, we had, uh, went to Milwaukee for a physical, and then went to Chicago to be re to be reassigned, mm -hmm. and then went uh, and I got assigned to Fort Jackson, South Carolina, mm -hmm. and what that was, that was a National Guard outfit from Grenada, Mississippi. I thought I said, you know, I never heard of that Grenada, Mississippi. Must be a big, I thought it was a big city because so all these people were from Grenada, you know. And I didn't realize that they're, they're all kin. One was there to Uncle Joe and you know, this stuff. And there were about seven, seven of them, and there were about three, three of us who were the Yankees from the North, somewhere from Wisconsin, Michigan, and New York. And, you know, a different place like that. 
and there I was. And I wonder why the, the, the New Yorkers were, were like a ball, just like anybody else, you know. But the New Yorkers were, were, were from the North, you know. And these were all hometown boys, they were all related. Mm -hmm. So what was your uh, specialty? Well, there, my specialty was uh, uh, artillery. Artillery. Yeah. And what was your unit? Here? Yeah. I don't know. It, okay. It didn't last very long. Uh -huh. So when did you leave for Korea? I don't remember exactly. I don't know the day, but see, but they did. I didn't go, go to Korea right away. See so what they did. In, when they got my ship was in, what they did is they uh, call us. They, they want to go to the northern first, you know. So what they did is they changed our MOS, and that's military. Uh, operations, especially. Yes. Yeah. And it changed mine to T I E. What is that? That's true information education. Uh huh. And I, I, that was just strange, but they, they wanted to get rid of me because I was from the north, you know. And everybody, they changed their MOS to whatever was or required. They wanted a uh, first shipment out. And so what I did is then I was transferred to Fort Huachuca, uh, Arizona, which is, I think that Fort Huachuca, it might, it might still be, still be used, I don't know, but it was 100 miles south of Tucson, and it was right near the Mexican border, you know. And I, these things have changed a lot since that time, you know. Uh, and then from there I went to Korea. So was it 1950 or 51? Uh, it, was, it was probably, by now it was 51, you know. 51. Yeah. And where did you arrive in Korea? Uh, Pusan. Pusan. And then we... Then we, that was the, 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 the place of reception. But that wasn't our time. We went up to Taejeon mm -hmm. uh, for assignment. And then I got tra transferred here to the 38th parallel, which is pretty close to Seoul. And the only other place I knew it, it wasn't, it didn't come into, it came to play later, Inchon, you know. Inchon. But uh, here, I saw a lot of action, but I wasn't in it. You know what? It was a combat engineer that I was assigned to. Because yeah. they didn't really have any, any, well, actually, I, was assigned to headquarters company first. And I liked it there. You know what? You know what I said? It was the best food in the army I ever had, you know. <laughs> what are you talking about? What food are you talking about? This headquarters company, it was part of the 119th Battalion. And I had, they put, put me on a job editing the, take care of the newspaper, you know, they had a little paper, it's a little sheet, two sheets, I think. And uh, I liked the job, but I was doing good, good at the job. But see, they have policy. Whenever they get somebody else that's better, they give them a job. And they, like, if, if come, somebody comes in who is, had an MOS of being a truck driver, but he, and, and, and his, he was really a chef, you know. A chef. So they took him and they put him on 
doing it in the kitchen, you know. And so there was a guy that came behind me. He was a college graduate, and he majored in journalism. And so I said, well, this guy better than me, you know. And I was doing a good job in that, that day. I was doing it, and they liked me, and I liked them. And, but all I had to go, you know. Mm. And then they sent me to a, a line company. And I, the line company was Company A, and they spent the rest of my time in Korea. What was your division then? What? What was your division? My, I was, I said MOS of, of T, I, and E. Yeah, but you were in 119th Battalion of 2nd yeah. Division, or what division was it? Uh, I was, I was signed to Company A. Company A. Yeah. So what was the most difficult thing during your service in Korea? The most difficult thing was when they said that the Chinese had broken through and they took away, they took away my automatic rifle, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a small thing, and it was, it was very light, and I liked it. Why did they take that away? They said, the Chinese were coming through, and we they gave me a great big heavy M1. Hmm. Well, it was, it, was, it was kind of heavy. It was 10 pounds. They said, and they gave us one clip of ammunition. They said, well, I worry about it. They said, when the Chinese come, you only have, have these, these there's one clip of bullets, and we were going to use your bayonet. And I thought, no, I don't know, really I don't know how, anything about, about hand to hand fighting. Oh. And I, 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 I was really afraid. I, had this, I, was, I was afraid. But see, there, there was, a, there was a, a year of Turks and Marines. And they said, when they, they get through the Turks and Marines, they are coming, coming to you, and so she lost the, the Turks and Marines held. And they, they, were, they were really tied two tight units, as they, they died the last man, you know, for a year in, you know. And sure enough, they were the Chinese. And there were no use, I didn't know the Chinese came in through. But I was afraid. I said, but so, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat with, with uh, he's, he's been, uh, I didn't like that, you know. Yeah, nobody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid. Yeah. And did you know why you were there fighting against Chinese? I, I really wasn't fighting. I was, this was an engineer, a combat engineer unit, and I saw a lot of action, but I wasn't in it. And the reason I wasn't in it, we are told that if they fire at you, you don't fire back. You just go hide behind a truck or, or a tree or whatever, whatever you can find. But don't fire back. See, one of our jobs operated a, a tramway. I know a, a, tra a tra tramway was like a ski lift, you know. Where they did, they would take the wounded, wounded people that are wounded, or guys who are wounded, and they would put them on, on, on there. And they would, would whoosh across the hills, you know. Otherwise, they, had, they would have to be on the back of somebody, and you'd have to plow all the way up and down the hills to, to get them. But see, we put them on a tramway, they could just, and our job was to uh, keep that thing going. And so we would spend all day long. Nothing go wrong with it. We all oh, we could just uh, look at you. <laughs> Well, they long just uh, and uh, it was kind of funny when the kids were loading, loading the wound on the truck there, uh, privates doing it, and there were some, of, some of our guys were, I was a corporal, and, and there were some sergeants, and, and, and we took orders from the, from, from, the, from these, uh, these guys who were the Red Cross, not the, yeah, I don't know if they were not Red Cross, but but or what, I don't know what they call them. I would pack them, they would pack them on, 
and we would go in the other way and we would go the upper upper, you know. And we just had a, how to do that. We didn't know how to do that. But we let that job of women, because it would be better than standing around all day. Hmm. And, yeah, we were looking about about a mile behind the lines or two miles, and we could hear, hear, hear that hear that cheering, boom, 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 all that long, we you know, all the long, we could hear the cheering going. But, it, uh, and we were close enough to hear that cheering, but like, he see a program on, on TV, it used to be very popular with that. You would see it more, it's called MASH. Yeah. And it was sort of like that, but, they exaggerated a lot. Uh, for one thing, the, the nationalists were way, way, way behind the lines. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they, they didn't have, and they, just, they had this... Uh, it's a drama, so yeah. they dramatized yeah. it. Yeah. But it was, it was it's quite a bit like it, you know, but there were factors that were exaggerated. Like, is corporal cleaner than we wouldn't have anything like that, you know. And they had him, they had someone play a grand piano. They never had a grand piano right. part on the front line. <laughs> but it, it was a good show. I, I kind of liked it, you know. Had you had a chance to visit big cities like uh, Seoul when you were there in Korea? No, I just, we just went through. So it was, it was, it was kind of, kind of a nice place, but it, it was just, I saw it from the back of the truck and I didn't believe it. But one place that was kind of, kind of bombed out was, was, in a, it was really a poor, it was really poor. Where? Uh, Busan. Busan? Yeah. Tell me about that, Busan, how was it? We were all shot up and we were all dark and, and the people were strung around in the garbage dumps and, and it was uh, a very pleasant place to have to live, you know. And I, I really felt sorry for the people there. It was, it was very depressing. There was nothing. The rooms were all out of the shot out, and the, everything was torn down, and, and oh, it was really poor. So what were you thinking when you see Busan completely destroyed and very, what were you thinking? I mean, was it really different from United States, right? Yeah, it was near a three years parallel and we lived in tents and that was really cold in winter time. We were living there, we had these sleeping bags and we get into the thing bag and we leave our clothes on, all our clothes on, except our boots. And we wake up in the morning, sometimes it would be so cold, it would just be like to get out of the sleep bag, you know. But you were in the artillery unit, did you sleep in the sleeping bag? Yeah. Were you not living in the concert building or, what is it? The, the bunkers? Yeah. No, no, we we we, we had to stay in tents. Because stay in tent. We were behind the lines, but the bunkers were only for those who were up in front lines, you know. I see. So you stayed in tent. Yeah, and it was cold, but it was hot. Each, each tent had a pot by the stove, and it was really hot. But then as soon as we got about ten, fifteen feet away, it got cold. Because uh, the circ the, the high there was the circling, it was in right there, mm -hmm. right by the pot valley stove. It was hot. It was hot, it was hot to keep warm, you know. How was Korean people in Busan? Uh, in How did they look? How did they look at the time? They were kind of skinny and scrawny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, like, like they were begging all the time, you know. Begging for what? Food? Food, food, and anything they could get, you know. And uh, I didn't, I didn't like like it in Pusan. I was glad we only stayed there a day or so, a couple of days, and then we were, we were assigned to 
uh, Tijuan, and Tijuan was not there, but it was it was kind of kind of beat up too. I understand that that the whole South Korea right, right now is is all built up and it's all beautiful. And Have you seen the picture of in, Northern Korea? And yeah, in some in some people. What surprised me is that uh, it was really easy to get out what what they call a house for, you know, to do the do the work, you know. But uh, uh, I I I have a picture of myself when I was there. I don't know if you have this, but I have this, this is an English picture, you know. How many pictures do you have? Well, I just, I just had to say this one. I a whole pile of pictures, but I didn't bring them to, to King, because uh, there wasn't enough room in them. Mm. So I just brought the one, and here it's the girl I couldn't find, and I, I, I kept to this day, I can't find it, you know. Mm -hmm. I, so I, I never used it. You know, I don't know if you ever get it, but uh, there's there much else to tell you. Mm -hmm. um. Except that one thing I didn't like, after the war, well, I know it was, it was that General MacArthur Went to win the war, and his boss, President Harry Truman, wanted a tie, and they argued back and forth, and and of course MacArthur, MacArthur lost, and I don't know whether he was fired or whether he, he resigned or what what happened, but he was out, and MacArthur and Truman, Truman. One argument, and that's when MacArthur wrote the song, Oh, so they never die, they just fade away. Mm -hmm. He was very popular. He got a tape parade in New York, and, and the people who liked that was done, you know. Did you like him? Did, did I what? Did you like him, the MacArthur, General MacArthur? Uh, well, yeah, so he wanted to win. And if he would have won, if he would have won, he would have crushed the North Koreans, and we wouldn't have this Korean problem we have today. Right, right, right. But he lost, and now the North Koreans are really coming at us, you know. That's a good point. And they're laughing at us, and they're trying to humiliate us, and trying to back, back us up in the corner, and, and I, I feel sorry for, for poor President Trump. You know, now he's doing that, you know. Because <laughs> if we would, we would fight them, a lot of people would, would get hurt and killed. Them. And if we don't fight them, we'd get, we'd get humiliated. <laughs> I don't know what anybody should do. Yeah, that, that's where we are. We yeah. don't have much solution for that. Yeah. So yeah. have you seen the modern picture of Korean city, like Seoul and other yeah. cities? Well, I've seen, yeah, I, I, I've seen some modern pictures. It, 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 it's pretty nice. It's all built up in this. So and what do you think about that? The country completely destroyed, the, like a city like Busan, you saw. Yeah. Now it's a high rise, and it's the <laughs> largest economy in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it built up, it was just like, it the war in Europe, all the world was in shambles. And it go all the way to the now. Because I can remember, after, at the end of World War II, uh, you, wanted, you couldn't buy a new car in the United States unless you put money on the table. I always have to wait like three years. <laughs> and can you imagine that? Now is not the, 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 the car years, how happy they were. You know, the, hey, you have a car, you say, well, who wants it? And, we about had 10 people I would want, you know. 
And when I did it, what the biggest I was with the most I know at Taylor, you know. We didn't get back to car until to buy a car until about three or four years later, you know. Uh, those were days when the, when the farmers, farmers would take the car off the road and, take, and drain the oil out and put it up in blocks, you know, in the barn, because they could drive it the next summer. Mm -hmm. Cars were real hard to get at that time, you know. No cars were being made. Anyway, I don't have any really great war stories to tell, you know. That's not a problem, but um, so what do you think about this transformation from very primitive, very poor, miserable country to 11th largest economy in the world? Well, I, I think it's, I think it, it's a great job, but, and you know, what, I, what I've done since I've, since the, in the last several years, I've become a Christian now, and I understand that in Korea, there's some of the biggest churches in the whole world. And this one one guy, Kathy you know, but I think he got, got like thousands of people in one church, you know. And that is a big church. And just as they built big churches, then now they must have built up the country, too. Like that. Yeah. So when did you become Christian? Uh, about, about 30, 30, 30, 40 years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And at that time, I was interested, before then, well, uh, I, I'm, right now, I'm a Bible Christian. I believe that God wrote the Bible, and what he says is true, and that's our, our guide, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to know anything about, about the male-female relationship, mm -hmm. go to the Bible. He sa it says right in the Bible what it, what it should be. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know about anything else, any other thing, it's right in the Bible. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures is uh, Romans 12, 2, which is, uh, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the reading of your mind. Then you may tr prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that, because it means that you can, like some people say, you can't know anything, or everything's all mixed up. You can know something. You can you know that. You, you know, you, you depend on that. That's why it's one of my favorite scriptures. <sighs> Have you read uh, Gospels? Oh, yeah. Mark, Matthew, and Luke, and, and John. Yeah. And John, my favorite. Oh. Which one is your favorite part? John. John, but among John, which one? Uh, well, my favorite one is John 3.16. 3.16, yes. It's a really, it's, it's a little known one, but it's, it's so profound. It's so simple, yet yeah, it's so pro profound. And in Revelation says, he books were brought forth, and they were all just according to their works, but, which means that there are a lot of Christians. See, they are judge, a lot of Christians, they just do the good, the easy part. Christ died for our sins, and that's all. They, but it doesn't say that. It says you have to be a believer. And if you're a believer, you have to be a follower. You have to do the works. And that's why I enjoy by the works. Yeah. And you know that Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John shared the sum of the stories, right? Right. Yeah. I made uh, four Gospels into one. What? Oh, 
USS. Yeah, I consolidated it into one. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to read back and forth between four different Gospels. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's my gift to you. Well, thank you. Since you are, you said that you are Christian, and I want to share that with you. Yeah. 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 Like I said, people ask what, what religion, and I say, I'm a Bible Christian, but I have a Pentecostal background. I believe that he really is doing things like, uh, you, let's see, what scripture is that? It's uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, uh, uh, eight, no, 13, 13 eight. Mm -hmm. Where Jesus Christ saved yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that all the things that were done yesterday, in the Old Testament, in, in the New Testament, anything that was done in the Bible, is available to us today. And there was uh, speaking in tongues, is the devil, that's not the devil. It was God inspiring people to speak in tongues. Yeah. And they're still speaking in tongues today because Jesus Christ said yesterday, today. Sure. And all the great, and then it, it says, uh, another scripture that says, uh, the, uh, uh, some entertained angels unawares. Be careful when you entertain strangers. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some have entertained angels unawares. And you always think of angels as being uh, women with long, flowing hair and, <laughs> and white, shivering gowns. And uh, if angels would really look like that, they, really, they look like all the other people, you know. Yeah. You remember uh, Jesus was picking up his disciples in John, and he was he was talking to Philip, and Philip introduced Jesus to his friend Nathaniel, right? Yeah. Remember. What Nathaniel said to Philip when Philip said that there's a Rabbi Jesus from Nazareth. Yeah, he said, there's, uh, what good should come out of Nazareth? <laughs> you would know that. Yeah. <laughs> what good can come out of Nazareth, right? Yeah. That's what Nathaniel said to yeah. Philip, right? Yeah, and, and Jesus said, before I can kill you, I have a truth, so I presume you're a prophet. <laughs> so, out of Nazareth, Jesus came, right? Right. Do you remember the Busan you saw in 1951? Busan was miserable, right? Yeah. Out of that Busan, now Korea came out of it. Yeah, really. Korea came out of Busan, miserable place like Busan. Now it's the 11th largest economy in the world. Really? Yeah. Huh. So, to me, it's like uh, John chapter 1, 46 and 48. What good can come out of Nazareth? Yeah. Jesus came out of Nazareth, right? Yeah. Korea came out of miserable 1950 Korea. Yeah. And now it's like a Jesus. Yeah. Just me, what, what Lord can do. I think the Lord really has a, a hand in that. And a lot of things are he, he's, the Lord is doing, doing things. So go back to John chapter 1, 46, okay? Yeah. Chapter 1, 46, and read it, and you will find that, oh, it's like a Korea came out of Nazareth. Yeah. So miserable, so Gentile, so bad, but Jesus came out of Nazareth. Korea came out of Busan that you saw, very miserable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Busan is really bad, you know. But they... One thing, uh, one thing I didn't do like, what they consider a delicacy to eat in Korea, that was dog meat. And I thought to myself, you know, who wants to eat a dog? <laughs> but, but they like that. If there is nothing to eat, you have to eat something to survive, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was not, not, not many days this year, no. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm so glad to meet you, you know. Yeah. You, you seem to really enjoy the Bible, and you are the Bible Christian. Yeah. I believe that too. I agree with you. Well, 
Yeah, I like, I like the Bible because it, 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 it gives a lot of answers to everything, you know. It's, yeah, like, you, you, I remember that years ago I used to like, how did Noah get all the animals on the ark, all the animals in the world? Well, he did. There were just two dogs, a male and a female dog. And all the other dogs, the Dalmatians, the, the, the ch uh, Chihuahuas, and all the other dogs, the kids were just two dogs. He didn't have to put all the dogs <laughs> on the ark. So, uh, Tom. Yeah. What would you say to our history teacher and young students about the Korean War? What would you say that? I would say, we learned a lesson. And it wasn't, wasn't much of a war. Then at first, you see, it grew, there was the, uh, the North Koreans came down and then they were beaten back, and then the Chinese came in, and then it, it grew, it grew, it grew. And, and they were finally beaten. But I don't know what's gonna happen now with, with this North Korea. Right. Uh, what I think is gonna happen, I think that, I don't know where, but if it keeps going, something's gotta happen, some, some, some side's gotta get in. And so then it's going to be the United States. It's just the United States are going to let, let Guam be destroyed. <laughs> and they would, they, would, they would try to negotiate and negotiate. And something got to happen then. There should be negotiation. I don't think North Korea will attack Guam, no. No. They are not stupid. No. No. So, so you want to say to our students that learn the lesson from the Korean War? What? Learn the lesson? Yeah, well, the lesson is that Korea can come back uh, after the war. And I suppose it was like that in Vietnam also, I suppose. Vietnam has come back quite a bit. I haven't followed Vietnam that close, but I think that they probably come back to, and the world certainly has come back uh, from after World War II, all the countries were, were blasted and bombed out. And, uh, it's, 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 I think we're heading for a real catastrophe, not a catastrophe, but uh, uh, sometimes you watch the news and there's nothing on it. It's uh, what the news was, was yesterday's news or something like this, we have to add, add a little to it, you know. But it's going to come, there's going to be a lot happening, you know. Mm -hmm. Any other episode that you want to introduce to me? Uh, when you were in Korea? No, not really. Uh, well, I I want to say I think you're, you're doing a fine thing by making people, making everybody who's the Korean War feel kind of proud, you know. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, when after World War Two, when oh. Uh, all the troops came came back, they were all welcome back, you know. And we came back from Korea, it was just like nothing, you know. Yeah. Because it wasn't victory, it was a tie. And America didn't know what to do, you know. And many people didn't know where Korea was. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't, it really wasn't much of a, of a thing at all. It, to end it, it wasn't, but I, I remember World War II, I was a young teenager, what they, they called T Bopper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and to me, World War II was, see, when you're a kid like that, you don't, 
realize all human suffering that goes into it. But I thought to myself, what a great, glorious war. Look at, in Russia you have the, all the troops dying from, from a cold, you know. And the Germans have some uniform on, and they're all dying. Oh, that's exciting. And then and you, had South, you had North Africa, all Africa, and the Roman Jerry Fox, and you had to fight in, in Italy. Oh, it's, I thought to myself, what well, a glorious war this. And then how would ever all the movie stars were going and coming, uh, taking commissions and this and that, they were joining. And there was this way at that time, it was radio, and radio was all full of people joining. And I thought to myself, you know, I was, I was just in the eighth grade when it ended, and I thought, it's got to last for more years, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> but it, it just lasted, what, about four years or something like that. But the Korean War was not popular and not victorious, right? Yeah, it well, wasn't none very really popular. People don't understand it and what Korea was, you know, and this and that. But now Korea is everywhere. Yeah. And it's a strong ally to the United States. Yeah. So you must be proud of your service. Yeah. Are you? What? Are you proud of your service? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was, it was good at that time. All right, um, Tom, Yeah. I think I had a very wonderful interview with you. Very nice meeting you. Well, thank you. Nice meeting you too. You know, I, I, I saw you in here, and I thought, you would be the old man right here. <laughs> <laughs> And you're a young guy. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm not young, but thank you. Thank you for your compliment. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from South Korea, obviously, but I live in Circus, New York. You're from South Korea? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I know that. Oh, you didn't know that. I am Korean. No, I thought, I know what you were. <laughs> <laughs> I am Korean, and I want to thank you for your fight as a Korean War veteran, because without your fight, there is no Korea. Well, one thing I want to say that when we were, we were stationed up in the mountains, you know, mm -hmm. on the U.S. Valley of Peril, and the weather was just like Wisconsin. Yes. But the other thing is, in Wisconsin, you got you got everything was heated up and it was nice and cozy, but in Korea, it was a little up in the mountains. We were in the bags, you know, and it was cold. So cold, yes, yeah. yeah. That's it. Well, all I want to say. Yes. Just like Wisconsin. Yeah. And it's how it, it was hot. Oh, it was hot. And we did, if we had some of these Koreans, dug a deep ditch, you know, and then in the ditch we put in uh, ice we got from the grave of the frustration. Mm. And then on, on the ice we would throw in cans of beer, you know, and we put uh, ice over the beer, so and this, was, this hole was built underneath our tent, you know. So we'd, we'd take me out and we'd walk along by the other tents, you know, and they'd say, they look at a cold beer. We <laughs> 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 it's weird time we said, well, the legislature says, yeah, fear us, you know. Yeah. <laughs> they knew, and they all had, they had some cans of warm beer. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So you remember that Korea was just like uh, Wisconsin, yeah. weather-like, and the uh, landscape is also very similar, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. And because you suffer there cold weather yeah. and, and hot weather, 
and many dangerous moments, Korea is now 11th largest economy and the most substantive democracy in Asia. So I want to thank you. That's, that's amazing that they came back so strong. Yes. I don't know. I hope North Korea gets pu pushed down. Someday we'll unify. I don't know when. <laughs> I, I hope so. Yes. Yeah, I need your prayer for that. And I hope that, that South Korea that just unify with their career, yes. but they dominate their career. Yeah. Because there, there is nothing good in their career. Mm -hmm. All the sufferings and the jailings and, and the military build up and it's no good, that's no life. Yeah. South Korea should take over their career. New cases should be the South Korea dominates. We hope so, and I need your pray, prayer for that. I'll, pray for I'll, I'll pray for that, yeah. Great. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome.